All right. That was good. So, uh, I hit the fish winters myself. I'm Pablo, like his outfit. I, um, I work mostly on Beam. That's my job. And I, I work at Google. And, uh, so what are we going to talk to about today? We'll just talk about what is Beam. I spent quite a bit of time talking about what's Beam, what's, what is a Beam runner? What do we mean when you say runner? What do you mean when you say SDK? And then we'll look a little bit about at the TypeScript SDK and receiving a, a tiny little demo. Um, all right then. So what's Veeam? If you go to the website, you'll find that Veeam is a unified model for batch and screen processing. And so, um, you know, this, this phrase was something that was coined by my, by my coworkers. They're, they're very smart. They have PhDs and, uh, and so anyway, like I found what this means in, in practice is where we have libraries. We, we publish libraries, uh, for, for different languages. So we, we have a, a Java one, we have a Python one, uh, we have a Go, uh, library for data processing. And we also have a, a work in progress type street one, which is what I want to talk to you about. Anyway, so, uh, we publish libraries to define and data parallel, uh, processing jobs, uh, and you know, you, these libraries, they define APIs that you can use to Again, define kind of data processing flows, and you can use the libraries for both batch and stream kind of real time plus. Um, and you know, what we say is that you can run on your engine of choice and I'll, I'll, um, some examples of engines that you can run in is, uh, Spark, Flink, uh, Apache Sansa. These three are Apache projects. Then there's Google Cloud Dataflow, which is a product that we have on Google Cloud. And then we have also a work in progress to be able to run Beam pipelines on, on Dask and Rage. So, um, anyway, and so when Beam started several years ago, which so on the time when I, when I joined, uh, the, the vision is, you know, you, you, you have the, uh, the programming language that you like, and you might, you, you as an individual or you as a company might have a team and this team uses a certain programming language. And so the idea is for each team to be able to choose the programming language that they like, um, and you know, run it on the runner that they like, right? So we have all of this, uh, support for runners. You might have seen them on the keynote earlier today. Um, and so we're working now on, on type three as the gate. This is a quick, uh, a quick view of, of what the, what the syntax looks like. I will show you more in a bit. Um. And anyway, so this, this idea of being able to choose your, your favorite programming language and your, you know, your big data engine, uh, it's what we call portability, right? And so initially when we were working on Beam, Beam had, Beam started as a, as a Java SDK. Um, so we had in Java and, um, what we initially did is, you know, Flink, Spark, they're, they're written in Java as well. And they have very similar APIs where you just define a series of data transformations, right? So what we did initially is we just, um, we would just translate the beam series of data transformations written in Java into a Flink series of data transformation also written in Java, uh, and, or we would kind of call directly to the Java APIs for Flink and, and Spark from, from the beam ones. Um, but eventually it became kind of, um, if we want to say that Beam offers a certain benefit on top of these, of these runners, we want to be able to add more the case, right? And so we had a, a Python SDK again, we have now a Go one. Uh, and so it became obvious that we needed to have some kind of port of, uh, we call it now a portability layer, uh, right. a notification and we call it a portability layer. And so what this is, is it's, uh, it's a series of formal APIs and interfaces, uh, to be able to execute data processing jobs, kind of language, programming language agnostically and runner agnostically. It's a little, uh, jumpy, but I think we can work with it for now. Uh, all right. So this is, this is kind of, again, I joined, I joined this team like six years ago. I was very. I didn't know anything. I was very, very junior and engineer back then. Uh, and I was, you know, my coworkers are always smart. And so this is something that's taken years to understand what, what we mean when we say, you know, badge and stream processing semantics. And this is, I think, 
uh, that's my take on more or less what they are. Um, so, you know, when we speak about batch processing semantics in the context of being, uh, we want a, a runner that provides these things, right? So we want, um, we have work that we want to do in parallel, right? We, it's kind of very similar to MapReduce, right? So we want to schedule the work on multiple workers. Uh, we want to be able that if some part of the work fails, we'll, you know, we'll figure out what to do with that. Now, another, another big thing about the batch processing is this shuffling of a bunch of data, right? So being able to do group by keys on, you know, on distributed environments. So you'll have a bunch of machines and, and you'll have to sort your data so that so you can process all of the data that belongs together, together, right? Um, and finally, something that is also not, uh, not talked about very much is, uh, data source splitting. So, you know, when MapReduce was first created and all of these systems, they work with, uh, with, um, sources that are meant to be parallel, like, you know, this distributed file systems, you know, like, um, they're a Hadoop distributed file system or, um, you know, the cloud file systems or, you know, databases that are meant to be parallel. And so because now we have a, like a million different kinds of data sources, uh, when you're writing these engines, you actually have to think about what sort of, you know, parallel reading or writing of data, uh, you can do with, uh, with these, right. And there's one more thing, it's work stealing, uh, which is some, a feature of Beam that I, I won't go into, but it's, uh, it's some, it's something else that Beam adds. Uh, so anyway, so. Basically, it's kind of, we have a graph of MapReduce jobs, right? So we have, you know, we have MapReduce job to do a certain operation on data, do some kind of shuffling of it, and then, you know, you'll apply a series of fees uh, until we get the data that we need, right? And so that's more or less it. And so then when we speak about stream processing semantics, um, this was uh, winning. We talk, we were thinking less about this large, you know, we have a bunch of data and we have to group it by key, uh, and we have to kind of sort the whole amount of data and do all of this super large scale shuffle. And what we care more about is because we're receiving data in real time, we want to, we still want to be able to group the data that belongs together, you know, in the same machine, but we want to do it in low latency. And we, it's not that we have like, you know, terabytes of data, it's more that we want to do it as quickly as possible. Right. So in streaming what we mean by stream processing semantics is we want very low latency shuffles. So we want to be able to send a data point from one worker to the destination workers very quickly. Uh, and then, uh, you know, again, if you think, you know, let's say you're, you're an engineer and you're tasked with writing a microservice that, uh, kind of processes the data coming in from, from something in your company, um, you'll eventually start thinking about, okay. You're going to want to window the events that are coming in and process them by, by a window of time. Um, and so you, you're going to want to remember some of the events or remember some kind of aggregation of the events, uh, over time. And so all of these are going to condense into this, uh, these four things that, uh, both of the streaming, uh, engines support. And this is kind of what beam expects, uh, from the, from a streaming runner. Um, and so we'll have, uh, timer scheduling. So you, maybe you want to do something in the future, but like, uh, you, you received an event that you want to wait a little longer to see if there's other events that belong together. So you, you can set a timer to wait for it. Um, you can store state to, to recover it as you process data in the future, et cetera. Right. So these are kind of the essential things of, of, um, stream processing. Anyway, so the, those were the things that the runner kind of provide and what the SDK provides, what, so, you know, we, at some point we started thinking about building this, a new SDK, this type script, type script SDK. And once that we had built this abstractions, um, the things that one has to implement to, uh, to actually have, uh, a new language supported on Beam are, there's five of them, I think before. Uh, yes. So first is the job definition API. So by job, I mean, you know, you define this graph of operations, this series of transformations that you do to your data. So this is 
kind of what you're using the language of choice to um uh to write your your uh, yeah your your data processing job right so in in spark it'll look like map flat map etc um so you know you'll you'll have to define those those interfaces then what we also need in being is a data exchange format so um because we've started there's some things that that your runner needs to know for instance what what is the key of your uh how do you want to group your data and so that way you need to the runner will receive a payload of bytes and the runner needs to be able to take that payload of bytes and say oh this thing this fraction of that payload is is the thing that I want to group by and I want to be able to group it with other uh elements that have uh that same key in for the format right and so there's a few standard coders that we've defined um and then there's also an environment to roost to run user code which is what we write is a basic little it's a little service basically a binary that runs in the in the specific language that can run the the python uh user function or the typescript user function the go user function and so these are the main three things that we have to implement to uh to get an sdk um oh and also a means to provide dependencies so if you want to run user code in a distributed manner you you know for java you need to figure out what's the class path and you need to copy everything on the class path to other workers uh for Python, you'll need your Python files. Touch to you'll need your, your your JavaScript files and so on. Very um, cool. Uh, oh yes, and optional, how um, an interface for the SDK to tell the runner how you're gonna split the processing of your data. Right? How the SDK tells the runner, oh, um, I was promising this this chunk of data, but I think we can we can partition it in multiple chunks so that you know we can parallelize that. Um, anyway, so. Now diving into what's the TypeScript SDK. Um, first, the question is why TypeScript? Uh, well, it was a hackathon project, and so it's uh, it's what someone proposed. Basically, um, we thought about other languages. We thought about Rust. We thought about C, C Sharp. Um, but yeah, so it was a hackathon project, and so there were five people who were interested in working on it. And our question was, how quickly can we put out a minimal? SDK together and um, how how can we use this to document you know what it takes to actually write a data processing SDK for me and pray um, there were there were two nice things about TypeScript uh, one is that there's uh, that it has a large community and also that it has a gRPC implementation because being used in gRPC under the covers for a lot of things is so um, if the language doesn't have a gRPC implementation, it's actually much harder to support me, um, because then we have to write a gRPC implementation first. Uh, all right then. So, um, one of the when we we're starting to think about this, we thought, okay, we want this SDK to be, um, you know, to have to be a Beam SDK that applies Beam principles, but we also want, you know, TypeScript developers to come and look at this and don't think it's a monster right so we tried to none of the people working on it were uh, typescript developers uh so we tried to catch up a little bit on on some some uh of the of the style of writing typescript these days um so we tried to use asynchronous uh, programming we we tried to use s somewhat natural uh syntax for javascript and typescript um functional programming we also have you'll see in the examples we use uh, generators uh, types of generators and so i'm say um all right and so now we can see what it looks like in, in type script actually so um you'll usually import bean itself and so um again what we're saying is we're defining a set of transformations for data right uh, so we create a runner, uh, and when we create a runner, we, you know, there we tell it what are the execution parameters, right? We can choose uh, to run our data processing job locally. We can run it on Flame, for instance. We can run it on Dataflow, this this small cloud product that we have. Um, so in, in this create runner call, you, you fast all the parameters to decide how to run your job. 
Um, and then once you have this runner instance, then you can tell it to run a job definition that you pass as a function, right? Um, now what could the job definition look like? Um, you basically define a graph or a series of data operations. So for example, here we're, we're wanting to read, um, uh, a bunch of data from a, from a distributed file system, right? So we tell it, uh, read this data from, from this JSON files and, you know, assume that this is a bunch of sharded files, right? Um, and so once we've read it, we can, we can do other things, right? Um, so for example, let's say that we're reading information about our users. Um, we might want to compute age distribution, right? So, um, here we first, we read the data, um, from, from JSON and then we obtain a sort of an abstract collection, sort of like an RDD or a, a, a data set, a data frame, something like that. And then we take that and we can apply other transformations, right? So in this case, we want to apply this transformation that let, that lets us group by country, let's say, uh, and we stop, stop jumping night ship. Um, and so, and then, you know, oh. anyway, um, if, uh, you can, you can aggregate by country, maybe mean age, standard deviation of, of the age, and, you know, maybe present of a, a sort of histogram of, uh, of pages, right? Um, so you will, what you'll get is as an output of this operation is a sort of data frame, uh, that, um, you know, that, that contains a, a you know, a data set with this, with this shape, right? You can apply other, uh, other operations, for example, you can filter out users for a specific country, uh, and maybe you can, um, you know, the, the classic, uh, example for all of these systems is counting words. So in this case, for example, we apply this filter and then, you know, we, uh, we take the bio of the users and then we split into words and we just count, you know, the occurrences of, of each word, right? And so. We do who we give it to the data scientists and they, uh, they can do some, some AI stuff on it. Uh, cool. So, uh, and finally something cool is, um, we, you know, we have, uh, because we define this, this abstraction so that every one of our, our SDKs, uh, supports and every one of our runner interfaces also supports. Um, we can use, uh, the data connectors that we had in other SDKs to read data from systems that, uh, uh, that we already implemented, right? So in our Java SDK, we have the means to write to BigQuery, uh, with a certain, you know, data with a certain schema. Um, we can, we can just say, okay, we'll take this data and write it to BigQuery. Here's, here's the table and, um, uh, and yeah, we can, we can do that thanks to the abstractions that we already had and we started with an entity. Um, yeah. And so something you might've noticed is some of our, some of the things that we applied are asynchronous and some of them are not asynchronous. Um, so, uh, the reason for that is that, um, and, and again, we're not, we're not TypeScript developers and we, we might need to figure this out. <laughs> But, uh, in this case, because this, this specific call needs to make an external call to our Java, our Java SDK and construct the, the series of transformations to read from BigQuery, um, we, we made this asynchronous, right? And so, um, there might be a way to, and we need to figure out a way to, to make this look more, a little bit more, more, more fluid and nicer. So you can just apply, you know, a series like this. Um, but yeah, so this is more or less what it looks like. Um, I know I prepared a demo. Um, it's a very simple demo. Um, we, we have not tested this with very big data. Um, so here's a demo with this syntax that I sort of showed to you. So we create a runner and then inside this function, we define a series of transformation. Now, something worth mentioning is that here you're, we're just defining the series of transformations when not actually executing them. We execute them until this, uh, until this 
uh, call returns, right? This when you start. Um, anyway, and what we're doing is we're we're taking this uh, this little uh, passage from the Bible, and then we're we're doing the the OG, uh, you know, data processing uh, task, which is to to count words, right? Um, it's a um, first, it's not big data; it's very small data. It fits on the screen. Uh, but anyway, so we could, we can take this. I did not try this before. <laughs> Just kidding. I tried it a lot. And, uh, anyway, so we, we get this, you know, simple list of values that, uh, uh, you know, that we, we process on a, um, with, um, you know, counted words. Now this ran locally and this, you know, it's a very small amount of data, so um, if we had a very large amount of data, then we would run into these problems of shuffling all this data, etc. Um, so what we can also do is we can, uh, you know, my smarter coworkers were able to make this work uh, on on a distributed runner, and so this still runs with very small data, but it will use this, you know, our fancy shuffling uh, infrastructure to to shuffle the data. Um, and, but yeah, so we, what we, what we end up doing is we define Docker containers that contain all of the, all of the runtime information, uh, that we can send to Dataflow again, our product, but, um, you can use this also with Flink. Oh, I missed the link. Here's the link. Oh, and so, you know, we'll, you know, it's takes a series of transformations and it just, uh, you know, it just executes them, right? So what this is doing is we need to start a VM and, uh, start a few Docker containers. And once that happening, then it'll, it'll run the job we say by status, right? Where it will, it will read the data, it will split it into words. And then down here, it will, uh, it will do the actual shuffling of, you know, the beta to the appropriate keys and, uh, and you know, output the counted words. Um, yeah. And so, in the meantime, while this runs, it'll take a couple minutes. Um, because we need to allocate VMs and LEK. Um, so what are some really ahead of schedule, but anyways, uh, um, what are some lessons that we learned? Uh, we got benefits of good portable abstraction, so we. We again were able to to read data from from read and write data to all of the systems that we had already implemented in other SDKs because we had defined this good abstractions in GRPC. Again, what we had originally was just direct calls with Java, so that was you know that couldn't be used by any other language. So it didn't have any positive effects on any other efforts. But by defining this type of abstractions, then we can reuse them uh, in other languages. Um, and so we, we actually only implemented the most basic utilities for, for the TypeScript SDK. So for example, um, I spoke about how the SDK tells the runner how to split the work to parallelize. Uh, the TypeScript SDK doesn't do any of that. Uh, so when you're reading data from a multi-parallel source, uh, what our TypeScript SDK will is it, it will use the utilities from other SDKs. And those utilities do have the implementation of work splitting and work splitting and, uh, I, you know, it'll rely on that. And so, you know, we have very minimal SDK with, you know, with not a lot of functionality added, but thanks to really, to these abstractions, we can take advantage of, I'll follow that to that. And so it's <laughs> mostly functional in a week, uh, if we're not what, granted there was, you know, we had we had our superstar, uh, staff engineer, uh, helping us. And so who that's kind of cheating, but Haley, um, if you're curious or interested how you could try it, um, it's, we don't have a release yet cause we're trying to, you know, to polish it like nice before releasing something. Um, so you, you know, you, you can, uh, clone our repository. It's just a fat slash being, uh, just change the last one. I get most project fear have the same preset, and uh, and then you can see it on their SDK slash texture. 
uh, director. Um, now, oh, this is tags and questions. Let's see if this ran. Okay, this ran. And so we, uh, uh, we don't have the metrics reporting set up, fortunately. Uh, so I think you'll have to trust me on that one. But uh, uh, yeah, are there any questions? I have, I have twenty five minutes <laughs> to answer questions. <laughs> I have one, maybe the peak step a little bit quick fall. Uh, I feel that all there is this applied a thing. Yeah. Let's say your operation that Bing is not to have before. Yeah. Uh, this, this imply that you semantic the only No. No, this is just a, this is just a Java script type strip thing where we, this specific, um, so I'll add, so this particular confirmation, it needs to get expanded into a series of data operations, right? So the first one will be, oh, write this data to files. And then second one will be tell the query to import this file, for example. And so anyway, uh, the expansion of this requires external asynchronous calls. And so what was natural in, in fact, strip to do in that case is, is to do, you know, an asynchronous thing with a promise that you await. Uh, and, and so that's the way we implemented it. Um, I think, yeah, again, I don't, I don't know type scripting up. I, I think I'm going to have tap. Someone is perhaps at the fact to study it and figure out what's a nice syntax that looks, you know, has this same kind of fluid, uh, you know, very look and you know, feel of, of coding with, and it's, you know, still is able to do this, uh, this long running, you know, asynchronous operations. Nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Well, all right then. Thank you very much. Chase. Take care. Away.